let's look at x and y intercepts for a function that's going to require factoring by grouping. So first starting with our nice y intercept, to find a y intercept always set x equal to zero. So for this one, n of zero would be two times zero squared, which would just be zero, plus five times zero, which would also be zero, minus 12. So we get minus 12 as the y-intercept. Your point is zero, negative 12, or just the y-intercept is negative 12. Right, as a point, or as the y-intercept, as being just negative 12 x is implied to be 0 if it is the y-intercept. Now the tough one here, we're going to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, set y equal to 0. So we want our function n of x, which is the same thing as y, to be 0. And so we're setting that for 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Now what makes this difficult is that our leading coefficient isn't just a nice one. It's not x squared plus 5x minus 12, it's 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. So ideally I would like to just take out a greatest common factor of two. That way I don't have a coefficient other than one in front of x squared. Well, it, to take out a greatest common factor of two, it would have to go into everything nicely. Two goes into two, it also goes into negative 12, but it doesn't go into five. So I can't just pull out a greatest common factor. There's no big number that comes out of everything. And there's also no least power of the variable. There's no least power of x I could pull out. So there's not a greatest common factor, which tells me I'm gonna use some factoring by grouping here. So to factor by grouping, I'm gonna take the first and last number and multiply them together. So two times negative, 12 is negative 24. So I want to think of factors of negative 24 that add up to be 5. So I need a positive and a negative number that would add up to be 5, but multiply to be a negative 24. So if I do 24 times negative 1, that would be negative 24, but those add up 24 minus 1 would be 23. If I do 12 and 2, I would have 12 minus 2 is 10. If I do 6 and 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, so I'm going to have to use 8 and 3. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, and 8 minus 3 gives me that 5 as the middle term. So those are the factors I'm going to use. So I'm going to write this as 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x minus 12. I'm splitting up that middle term. Instead of calling it 5x, it's going to be 8x minus 3x, which is still 5x. Okay, and now I'm going to pull GCFs out of each group. So greatest common factor here, I can pull out a 2 as well as an x. So 2x times x gives me 2x squared, and 2x times 4 gives me that 8x. Next group, I'm going to do the same thing. I have negative 3x minus 12, so I can pull out a negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times a positive 4 is 12. And now my last step, I'm going to pull out these numbers out front, 2x minus 3, and multiply it with x plus 4. That common group that we're multiplying 2x minus 3 is, with is x plus 4. So now I have this 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 all factored by grouping. And I want to see what makes each factor 0. What makes x plus 4 0? And what makes 2x minus 3 0? And that will give me my x-intercepts. Well, the easier one, x plus 4 is 0. If I subtract 4, is that x is negative 4. The harder one here, I'm going to add 3 over. I get 2x equals 3, which means x is going to be dividing both sides by two x's, three halves. So there's my two x-intercepts. I can write them as points. So my x-intercepts, x is negative four, would make y zero. And also x is three halves, would make y zero. Now I could always plug back into the original equation and double check that if I plug in either three halves or negative four that I really do get zero out. Those are truly y-intercepts. If I'm ever unsure about that factoring by grouping, I can always double check.